Some people, when they eat certain plants, they they have reactions. But I think that's like what kind of reaction? Their body, you know, they have like an autoimmune re- reaction. Oh, okay. Like some people that are on like high vegetable, high oxalate diets, high, you know, like mm-hmm. leafy greens and stuff like that. Some people have reactions to them. Mm-hmm. I think that that's probably less common than than the, the like the hardcore carnivore people believe. How long did you do the carnivore diet? Um, I generally only do it for a month in and January. Jan- January is World Carnivore Month. Okay. So just for a goof, a couple times I've g- eaten nothing but meat. Uh, like one. Do you get the meat sweats? Is that a no, real I thing? No, I get the meat explosive diarrheas, <laughs> though. Dude, I had diarrhea <laughs> that you could write home about. Like you write books about the diarrhea I had. Like it wasn't just <laughs> diarrhea. It was like oil was coming out, like crude, like black gold, Texas <laughs> Texas I don't feel like that. I, I mean, I understand that there's lots of benefits to it and people swear by it, but it seems like, I don't know, I, I'm not, I, I feel like it takes me a long time to digest like a piece of steak. I don't know. It, for me, it didn't, that didn't bother me. Um, I lost a lot of weight, but I, <laughs> but I didn't lose weight because I was diarrhea. dehydrated. The diarrhea only <laughs> lasted a couple of weeks. But, I mean, for a couple of weeks, it was touch and go. Like, it was like I would have a feeling in my stomach, like, oh, Jesus, like, get to a, a toilet quick. How did you podcast? Uh, I have uh, strong butt muscles. I just <laughs> keep it tight. I don't know. I, I, I did it. But But here's the thing. It's like when you cut out all the carbs— and you cut out uh, particularly like bread and pasta, which is really, for me, the culprit. Yeah. Um, I avoided all the crash, and I never felt sleepy. Like, my energy level was completely sustained all throughout the day. Okay. Then when I did it after that, I added in fruit. Okay. And when I added in fruit, I avoided all of the diarrhea, all of the craziness. Okay. So I guess the fiber from the fruit. And right. It's just all I was eating was, like, ribeyes and Jesus. elk meat. The sounds, elk meat sounds good. It's great. Ribeyes, I But I, I needed know. fat. Like, you can't just eat elk meat. Uh, you can, I'm sure. But the, the, there's, you need fat. Yeah. And elk is very lean. Elk okay. is, you know, you're basically eating a super athlete. Yeah. You're eating a super athlete that's running away from mountain lions. Like, yeah. They're, they're fucking jacked. And so when you, when you butcher an elk, like when you're in the field and you butcher an elk, you see very little fat. Right. Very, very little. Mostly what you're seeing is muscle tissue and... I mean, and it's it's a dense, rich, dark red muscle tissue of, and it's so rich in protein and right. vitamins, and it's so fucking healthy for you. But you need fat, so I would use um, I would use um, tallow, beef tallow. That was grass fed beef tallow. Was I, I would cook it in that, so I'd get some fats from that. Mm-hmm. But I found that I like I started eating a lot of bacon with it, and that helped too. <laughs> so when I'm eating, um, this sounds really bad for your heart. I don't know. Not, <laughs> that's that's a that's a myth. Is too. that a myth? Yeah, that's a myth. That's definitely a myth. I mean, I think for some people genetically, they're uh, predisposed to certain heart conditions and certain cholesterol issues. It doesn't like build up. No, 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 no. When no. you're no, see, this is that thing. It's like you have this like sort of like what is it? Is that bad for the, all the studies that point to meat being bad for your heart are what's called epidemiology studies, and those studies where uh, it's where they make people fill out like a questionnaire like how many times a week do you eat meat right like five days a week and this and then they looked at those people and they said oh there's higher instances of heart disease in those people but what they don't cover is how many of those fucking people are eating cheeseburgers right and how many of those people have industrial seed oils in the cheeseburger and the bun and the fries which are cooked in industrial seed right. oils <laughs> and how many of them are eating coca-cola like drinking coca-cola all day long ice cream. which is filled yeah. with fucking seed oils right and and corn corn syrup like all that shit is what's really bad for you well the, you know about the studies that were done in i think it was the 1950s or 1960s where the sugar industry paid scientists to lie about the source of heart disease and connected to, to saturated fats mm-hmm. and it was it was really just bribery yeah they, and they didn't pay him much they paid him like fifty thousand dollars <laughs> and in paying them that fifty thousand dollars, see if we can find that because the New York Times wrote about this. So people have this idea that 
that meat is bad for you. Well, but I rem- meat is what people have been eating since the fucking beginning of time. Right. I, I remember reading that, like, the whole idea that fat was bad for you is because of the sugar yeah. lobbies, and then they just replaced all of the fat with sugar, and then now we have an obesity epidemic, 100%. essentially. Um, and I do think there's part of the problem with, like, we have a problem. I mean, even flying lately, I'm like, oh, my God, every single flight I've been on, they need like seven wheelchairs. You know, it's, it's just seems more than ever before people are, are struggling with obesity. And I think it's obviously been proven. And I think a lot of it too, is just like confusion about what they should eat. Yeah. I feel like there's so much confusion around food. That's not really confusion. There is confusion, but it's also like that stuff's delicious and it's, it tricks (laughs) your body and you eat Cheetos. Go back to the top, please. So this is uh, 50 years ago, sugar industry quietly paid scientists to point the blame at fat. Did anybody get punished for this? I think they're all dead. <laughs> Luckily. <laughs> but this is also part of the problem. We have the, the the ability for this crap to happen. Yeah, well, it happens less and less now because of the internet, because this stuff can get out. But yeah, the next year after several scientific articles were published suggesting a link between sucrose and coronary heart disease, the SRF approved the literature review project that it wound up paying approximately $50,000 in today's dollars for the research. <laughs> <laughs> One of the researchers was chairman of Harvard's public <laughs> health nutrition department, an ad hoc member of SRF's board. So they, they literally paid these scientists to conduct this bullshit study because there was all sorts of articles, scientific articles, suggesting a link between sugar and coronary heart disease. Oh, my god! They recommended that the industry fund its own studies, which is well, then we can publish data and refute our detractors. Someone got oh. paid $50,000 to destroy America. Literally kill people. <laughs> yeah. Literally kill people.